all right y'all good morning okay so my computer done crashed like four times already and the first time I was talking for 30 minutes and then 20 minutes and then I kept trying to dwindle it down now I'm just gonna go ahead and spit it out uh, my life story I wanted to go from my childhood to moving uh, from Cal born in California to moving down south to going overseas to working with these three letter words and also um, my family more of my family dynamic but because my computer keeps on crashing to me that's like a sign that I just need to be a little bit more organized in my technicalities but a part of me being more organized is me explaining those things but in honor of my father I'm going to do him first because he didn't get a lot of clout it is difficult for me to coming from being raised to be subservient uh, towards men. It kind of bothers me when I see certain things. And when I say subservient, right now, that just means in his face just enough to get by. But anyway, this is in honor of my father. Uh, Kwame, he also talked uh, about somebody in a Predator movie. For some reason, I got just, I always catch at the right time. Um, my dad was in that movie as well, Predator 2. And from what my mother said, people would say, because he wasn't born in Jamaica, how can he play a Jamaican part? But when you, <laughs> you don't have to be born in Jamaica to be Jamaican you don't have to be born in Africa to be African let me talk this is the family tree that my father gathered fifth grandmother Anani La Abu Abua from Africa tribe of Brong Ahafu Ashanti region of southwest Ghana southwest region of Ghana So she was taken to Jamaica and um, the grandmother she had, let me hurry up, shit, Iwa Ajua, born in Jamaica. And we have the beads and different things to um, show. Like there's pictures of my grandmother. My dad has the um, picture. Um... And then the third one, and this is when I start getting into slavery. The Dutch owner took her to Texas and she married an African Indian captive by the name of Philip Anthony Spicer. There's more, but I'm not going to read it all. So once the names changed, there was a change from Thomas. There was a name change. She married oof, the great-grandmother Esther V. Norman Thomas, born in Richmond, Texas, married Juan Thomas from Cuba. So that explains my Latin dance, the Spanish language. But I also danced Yoruba. Because he was a musician, um, I can cross traditional dance. And then after the Dutch people got them, that's when you get into the Catholicism and the Christianity portions of my family. So we have more than one part. And on my mother's side, which is a lot of the missing links, roots, 
down south where I am right now <sighs> remind you you have mother father and every organized religion there's traditions and culture and a lot of the language was backwards there will be times where you will hear me the, the staff which is an ancestor stick um, the shaker rays, the um, what is it called? The hatchet. There's things to that. Um, when I had got Jamaican money and I was trying to give it to <laughs> one of Kwame Utties and she was like, I have some, you know, and um, it was symbolism to me as something spiritual, but if you're not aware of people's specific practice you can be talking but be talking about two separate things you know what I mean but it was we had enough in common to be um, having similar conversations so we have a lot in common to me everything look African whether it's Cuban whether it's Indian Native American it looks African and it looked like that towards the translation so I'm appreciative of some of the religious folk and people who didn't mind taking time and translating or being a little bit patient getting through the do low twist versus just jumping to conclusions trying to say that you saying something bad so with that knowledge let me also, Osambo talked about shadow work. I'm aware that I believe that my American, more promiscuous, sexually explicit side of the family does damage to the African side. Um, when it comes to bridging gaps sometimes because during a lot of these pilgrimages and certain things that done happened in the past, and we didn't bridge the gap because of uh, being too uh, different when it comes to that. And I'm not saying that Africans don't do whatever, but remind you there's a difference between culture, tradition, tourist area, and what people will show you versus other things. My dad was a Rasta mountain man, He, even though he was born in Compton. He went to the woods for 40 days and 40 nights and came out different. He also was scouted by those athlete sports teams and a whole bunch of other shit. Ain't no coincidence for that. Okay, it's eight minutes and my mom called. So whenever I'm getting ready to talk about things like cults, bloodlines, arranged marriage, um, our connections with certain things they don't want me to talk about that or even certain celebrity stuff they don't want me to talk about that but she isn't even aware of everything but she's psychic so um the marriage portion is the part she didn't want me to talk about um but I am going to talk about it so the last time I discussed I think um before I go into that Damn it, I wish I had all of the time. The market area, the market and the festivals should be areas for socialization, medium shit, mediumship, buying, selling, trading, probably coding, um, and things like that, whether it be America or Africa or Jamaica. You know what I mean? That's what uh i would like black people to start getting more into the flea markets as well um that's what i want everybody gotta do it but that's what i want so when you get into inheritances um and there's some mixed people who can see the battle between african inheritance being an heir of something I had a student, he got a Nigerian mom and American dad, and he said that there's too much voodoo. And what he's talking about is the 
bush training where you go into the woods and you do things like that. That's I I believe he's talking about that portion of it. All right, my thing going dead. I'll be back.